Hello everybody, welcome to GT Planet and welcome to another one of our tuning guide videos. I'm Chas Draycott, the lead video producer here for GT Planet and it's a delight to be back on your screens once again. Today we're going to be looking at this marvellous creation, the Mini Cooper S. As you've seen in some of our races before, we've been aiming at some of the sort of higher prize bracket races within the sort of cafe menu books that you have to do in Gran Turismo 7. And we're going to be using the Mini today because we're going to be taking on a Clubman race at Goodwood in in the UK which has a performance points limit of 350 now the car at present is currently at 257 now this is my second setting sheet for this car admittedly because I've tuned it before and played about with it just because the mini is so much fun but we're gonna go into the race first time around and see how difficult this is gonna be because one of the main things you have to consider with this race is that the AI is in a sort of mode of enhanced difficulty uh, you'll see that it is signified here by these lovely chilies here now I say higher price bracket this is only 30,000 credits sure but it's just something a little bit different and it's not right up there at the top of the pecking order because there's some more difficult races like the one in this video that I've also looked at and will be sort of looking at further down the line as well so I don't really want to sort of conflict those with these so we'll see what we can do in the mini the first time round. Goodwood is very very difficult indeed it's not an easy circuit this place because it's such a commitment circuit there's really high speed corners here it's all very smooth it's very old school it's not like a sort of tilka drone where you go in a straight line then you've got a hairpin then a chicane you know it's just really long smooth natural corners still need to get the sports hards for this thing actually I completely forgot about that uh, so we're gonna get those purchased as of right now and we will get them fitted and jump into the race let's go now it's worth mentioning actually that obviously the sports hard tires have just put the uh, performance points up by quite a lot so I think it said 327 in the end yeah 327.38 the tune that we're going to be looking at doesn't require much in terms of parts. It's all about just fine tuning the car and really getting it to behave itself. And we'll get over into uh, those settings in a few minutes time. But I've never done this race, so I'm excited to see what we can get out of the Mini here. Everybody's going to be on the same tyres as well, I believe. So it's going to be a case of seeing whether what okay so it seems like some of the AI have very quick little minis we saw also previously in the other video that I did at Daytona that of course the AI once you get in front of them seem to have a bit of a uh, increase in pace to say the least now I can't remember Goodwood that well since I last went round here I think one of the last things I did here was a license test or a no what would it have been Oh, it was the circuit experience. The circuit experience here in the Aston Martin is painful. Hopefully the AI not taking each other off here. It's all about momentum in this car. And there's not going to be much momentum there if I carry on like that. Such a scary corner, man. Going over the crest of a hill and then swinging it around to the left. Onto the brakes here. And a little bit too hot. The rear end trying to come around. Obviously it's front wheel drive, so the rear end is just trying to overtake the front most of the time. 75 mile an hour in third. I don't even think my BMW does that. It's two laps though, so you've got to make the most of it. We're getting slipstreamed from behind right now as well. And that car is actually the last placed car as well, which is quite interesting. He's going to actually send it down the inside of me. You banned it. Bit of a dab on the throttle just to try and bring the front around. We're having an accident. Flipping heck. That felt fun. It probably wasn't the fastest line, but it felt fun. Right, come on, Chaz. Big commitment you need here, lad. Just a lift, and then flat. Here we go. Getting that little tasty slipstream. He's starting to get away. Sounds like he's got longer gears as well, because he just changed up then at like 90 miles an hour. Again, could be something that we look at when we're tuning. There's a lot of things to change on this car, as there is with most cars at Gretchen's M7. That's a stupid idea, Chaz. Just bounced off him a little bit. Because it's such a short race, you definitely need an advantage when it comes to the car. Especially when you're as slow as me. You can hear all the little bits rattling and dinging away in this car. <laughs> it's very endearing. As the minis are. Oh, this isn't very endearing. Uh, Mom! <laughs> that was terrifying. Excuse me, guys. Flipping out. This is proper Goodwood-style racing, though. This is what you want. Little classic minis all pinging off each other around it. Classic circuit. Go on. We've got the run on him somehow after it in a concrete barrier. Look at the speed of it. 
Yeah, we definitely need to tune this thing. But this is why we're here. This is why we're here at the end of the day. So, not a desired result. Seventh out of just eight cars. And it's time to go back to the drawing board and, of course, modify the car. I think there's only a few performance parts to put on it. And then we'll fine-tune it from underneath. Oh, look at that, the red arrow's overhead. I like that. I didn't know it did that, Goodwood. Now, obviously, one of the main points of these videos is the fact that we're highlighting the amazing community we've got here at GT Planet and on our forums as well, which is a great place for you to find all the tunes, setups, and advice and everything you might need to make your Gran Turismo 7 and other Gran Turismo game experiences ever better. And today's tune is coming from JC's Garage in his FF tunes, that's front engine and front wheel drive, and he's got a great setup that's on my left screen at the moment for this Mini. I'll put a picture up of the car as well, by the way. It looks absolutely awesome, but you can find that in the forums. Uh, what we'll do, actually, I'll give you a little demonstration on how to find that. Uh, you go to the GT Planet website, you then go to forums at the top, and then you'll see here there's a Gran Turismo section. There's a little drop down underneath it, and you can just go into Gran Turismo 7. And in here, you'll find our tuning forum, which will have all of the different setups and things that you might want to just make your cars a little bit quicker and a little bit more useful in these races. But what I did, to be fair, is go up here to the search icon, I searched in this forum, in the tuning forum of course, and then just typed in MINI and then a lot of different search results come up and of course any responses, anything that includes that word will come up. So if you're looking for a specific car or a specific race, often the names of them will really help in there. But to get the parts we need, we need to go to GT Auto first off and go to Car Customization. And what we're going to be doing here is putting the aerodynamic parts on the car and making it look that little bit better as well. We're going to have the stock body, so it's not a wide body car that we mess with here. And we're going to have the front end as Type B, which is this little lip here just to give it that extra bit more downforce. On the rear, we're also going to go for Type B as well, which removes everything, just takes any sort of rear weight away, I suppose. And then with the wing, you're going to be looking at Type A. I mean, that looks pretty cool on a Mini, but it's a bit garish for that sort of car, isn't it? So Type A it is, which matches the roof colour as well. I quite like that. Now, you can put whatever wheels you want on it, but obviously there's a lot that aren't going to fit this sort of car. So we're going to go with... Oh, see, I always go with these. The uh, OZ Super... Sorry, I'm going to get this right. Super Forgiata wheels, because they just look like beefy racing wheels. We'll go 11-inch, and we'll just go wide and offset. You cannot change in this car, so it gives us a chance to just sort of beef it up a little bit and that's how she looks at the moment uh, i would put a livery on it but obviously that takes a lot longer to do so we're just going to leave it in the standard colors for now not really sure the uh, the green and black works actually to be honest with you now that the visual parts are done we're going to back out and then we're going to go and see what other parts we need to buy for the car looks like it's only had i'll show you the image now actually that jc's put in the forum uh, you can see that it's had the body rigidity upgraded down there sure it's not in english but we know exactly what that means don't we so you can find that component in the semi-racing tab. It's 12 grand, increases the body rigidity, just helps the car remain a bit more stiff when it comes to racing and cornering. As you can see here, there's no other forms of that. It's not like weight reduction where you get different stages of it. Uh, you only get the one which is in the semi-racing tab just down at the bottom. It's interesting as well, actually, because he's also bought ballast for the car. Now, ballast can be really useful, not just something that's seen to slow a car down, for example, just to make it heavier. But if a car is front engine and needs some weight over the rear, you can sort of put ballast a bit further back in the car and help bring that rear down a little bit rather than just using downforce, which I think is really cool, actually. It's a very clever way of using it in Gran Turismo 7. What he's also gone for is a fully customizable LSD, limited slip differential, and the fully customizable manual transmission. Now, that will really help us out because, of course, it means that we can change where the power is in the car and how it gets handled. I've also noticed just going back into the uh, club sports tab as well, there's a sports clutch and flywheel applied to the car. There's also a sports air filter and sports silencer applied as well, which I've already bought in the past anyway, so we'll just change that when we get into the garage. Fully customizable suspension is the last thing that I can see on here as well. There it is in the racing tab. Oh, and I also missed the fully customizable computer as well, the ECU. Okay, it looks like we should have everything we need now, so we're going to go into the settings and we're going to copy this bit by bit. I've got all the sheets on my left-hand side just over here, and we're going to go through it one bit at a time. So we've got sports hard tyres on, fusty, fusty, fully customizable suspension with four on the front anti-roll bar and a maximum of 10 on the rear. We've then got 24 on the front in terms of the damping ratio and 36 on the rear. Then in terms of the expansion, we're going 46 and 34, so we'll just turn that down there natural frequency is down to 2.11 just gone past it slightly and 2.40 
in terms of the negative camber, we've got 1.4 on the front, and then the rear is actually on none. It's completely flat at the rear. That does interest me quite a bit. In terms of the toe as well, we've got absolutely zero on both axles. Fully customizable LSD has, oh, excuse me, five as the initial torque down here, and then it's literally just all fives. It's all absolutely minimal, so the LSD is doing very, very little here. Let's have a look what else. In terms of downforce, it's very even, actually. It's 50 on the front, and then 51 on the rear. We've got 40 on the ballast, that's 40 kilos. And it's positioned minus 23. I'm not quite sure what that is 23 of, maybe meters. Oh, power restrictor, I've forgotten about. Uh, we need a power restrictor that goes to 74. So I need to work on that. And let's have a look at the manual adjustments here for the gearing. So we've got this one to 50 miles an hour, which is on 2.597. Wow, that's very short. Hang on, I'm going the wrong way here, aren't I? <laughs> Hang on, I need to adjust something else here. Final drive is five. So that's maximum on the final drive. There's a lot of fiddling with these bits. This is probably the bit that takes the longest, to be fair. 0.967 is the next one. That's for fourth gear. It's amazing it can be so accurate, though, isn't it? There's so much you can mess with. Next up is 1.228 for third gear. Oh, nearly. Nearly. <laughs> then we've got 1.665 for second gear. And then I believe first gear has stayed the same and not been affected by anything else. Now the intercooler is normal, but then we have a, ooh, I think a low-end torque supercharger on there. I'm not great with my French, but I think that's what that means. Let me just check it, actually. I'm going to translate this. Compressed low-speed torque, that translates to. So we need a low-speed or a low-torque supercharger. See, I thought I had all this down, but clearly not. So we need a power restrictor and a low torque supercharger. We do also need a brake balance controller as well, actually. There's the power restrictor in the semi-racing tab. Oh, sorry, club sports tab. Now, where is? There is the low end torque supercharger in semi-racing. So we'll grab that. And the brake balance controller can be found in the racing tab for 1,500 credits. So now we've got those. We need to put the power restrictor to, I think it was 78 on this screen, 74. So what we've done is apply the supercharger, which gives it quite a lot more power, and then just take a lot of that away. So it's basically just giving it a load, so we've got that movement and that headroom, but then dragging it back a little bit so it doesn't go over that 350 mark. Uh, the brake controller is applied already, and we also have our supercharger low end as well. If we measure it, it's 350.31. So clearly, in some of the updates to the game and some of the calculations that have been changed since this setup was made, because I think this was made in June 2023, uh, there have been some differences. So I'm just going to have to figure out what we can change now to, well, maybe we can just come down on the power restrictor a little bit and just re-measure it there. There you go, 348.78. Look at that little rocket ship. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Let's take it out to the circuit now we've fettled with it and see what it can do. Okay, so back to Goodwood and back to the Clubman Club. Clubman Cup Plus. <laughs> there we go, get it right. And let's go. The car might sound a little bit beefier as well, actually, now, because it's got that sports air filter and exhaust on it. And obviously we've got more power, so hopefully we can just sort of coast past in a straight line, because that's probably the easiest place to gain positions when you're me. But all of a sudden, they're the same pace again. Look at the cars behind. Flying up behind us. And flying down the inside of me. No, you don't. Is the difference that we've got fifth gear and they've not? Or is that why we heard the car in third gear go up to fourth earlier? because they had a better transmission as such. I'm so scared of this car down my inside, man. <laughs> Go around his outside. Whoa, he's nerfed me. Oh, there's been more drama behind as well. I quite like this race. It's lively, isn't it? All right, what's going to go on here, guys? What are you doing? I don't want to just drive into the back here, but you need to get on with it. Oh, God. Oh my god, look at the radar. <laughs> that is fantastic in this slipstream. No, you're not sneaking down the inside there, son. Here we go. It's more like it now. We just need to make sure we get these corners right. It's almost two by two into here. 
I'm so scared, so scared, so scared, so scared. Right, come on, let's get this right. That's one corner where you can definitely beat the AI as the final corner. So now we've got to go after him, the race leader. Got to keep it nice and tidy around this first couple of corners because this is a big, big commitment area. He's braking, so I'm braking. Just give it a tap of the brakes and then straight back on the power. Oh, yeah, we're reeling him in now. Let's get in that slipstream. Not move around too much on the way up to it, though. Car behind still sticking with us. Nice and minuscule on the inputs. In low-powered cars like this, where they've not got a big amount of oomph to put them forward, you've got to be so careful with your inputs on the wheel. Oh, my God, we're three wide. Look at that bandit. Oh, we're three wide still. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I wasn't expecting this to be as massively entertaining as it is, but this is possibly one of the best AI races I've done. This is a supercharger as well, whining away. Oh, are you sure about that, son? Oh, no, we need slipstream now. That red one's rapid. That red one is rapid. Come back. I don't think we're going to win this. And then we've got this expletive flying up behind me. Get stuffed. I didn't mean to edge you out there, I'm sorry. Oh, I've edged myself out. I don't think I've made that corner once in this uh, episode, have I? I'm trying too hard now. Well, sugar. Sorry. Well, that red one's rapid. Why can't we have that one? <laughs> well, then. Well, that's a turn up for the books, isn't it? That was hilarious fun, though. Absolutely hilarious fun. Massive improvement on the car's side, though, I can tell you that. It felt so much easier to drive. It wasn't that it was necessarily difficult to drive earlier, but it felt a lot more responsive that time round. I want to give that another go. I really enjoyed myself. Let's do it again. Come on, I'm all fired up now to have a go at this. It's that red one at the back. Look at the speed of it. Absolutely rapid. Don't go down my inside, please. Okay, we remained flat round there this time. You've got to be so minuscule on the wheel. It's dead funny. Are we braking? Nah, we're not braking. They're braking. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's not how I want to do it. I was just a little bit overconfident in my car's ability. Down the inside here. Go, go, go. A little bit forceful down the inside there, I must admit. There's a lot of whistling and whining noises going on in the car now, more than ever. That's not the red one behind us, is it? No, it's that teal one. It's trying to come through the pack. Right, let's get this corner right this time. There we go, look at that! See, it's not so hard, Chaz. That's the one. Oh, that's the one. Right, we've got the teal car behind us. Is the red one there? Can't see him. Oi, get back here with that slipstream. Right, we're going to go flat round turn one. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're definitely not. Oh, I'm so scared then, but we've made it work. Again, and why am I not in the slipstream? Come on, Chaz. Head forward like karting. Get on his right before he makes it to the apex. Yeah. Like that. Give it the full, I'm more entitled to this corner than you, malarkey. Flat. Oh, this car is so much fun it just responds it's like a house fly around corners before it felt a little bit more wallowy you know it still felt fantastic but it just felt that little bit more like it was gonna get halfway around the corner and sort of give up on what you wanted it to do but as I said before Goodwood is all about learning the commitment corners and really knowing the place where you can push the car to its absolute limit and where you can be late on the brakes because it's such a scary place to have an accident. It amazes me that they still do so much classic racing flat out around here, because honestly, the cars that you race in in classic racing, like these minis, are, well, very unpredictable, good lord. We're not away by a country mile here. 
Just get this right, Chaz. That's it. Yes. Oh, JC, you have made a wonderful mini, my friend. Only 350 performance points, but every single one of them was very enjoyable. Crack him. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, you know what? If you need a quick 30 grand or something on this game, just go and do that. That's great fun. Obviously, use JC's tune as well. It's JC's Garage FF Tunes. Uh, you'll find it on the forums as well. It's a fantastic, fantastic list of cars as well. Go and try it for yourself, everybody. As I said before, the forum support and the people that are on there, the advice and help everyone gives each other is just awesome. It's why, you know, I love being a part of GT Planet anyway, but it's so much fun to have such great people involved and uh, such a wonderful community. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode, though. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again very, very soon. Have a good day.